we're uh, going to look at four words this morning. You can write them down. I'll give you the four words, and then we'll go back and look at them. The first one is called, C-A-L-L-E-D, called. The second one is equipped. And that word has two P's in it, by the way. I wrote it down the other day with some other people uh, where I was on a chalkboard, and I failed to put two P's, and I had a guy come up and tell me after the fact, he said, everything you said was just right, Brother Tisdale, but you spelled equipped wrong. And I said, well, I, what I needed today, and I got one, was a grammar Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> he just had to tell me I spelled it wrong, but I was glad to find out that I, somebody was paying attention. I did learn something, I'm telling you. Equipped has two P's in it. <laughs> the third word is qualified. And the fourth word is sent. Not S-C-E-N-T, but S-E-N-T. Some folks do have a scent about them, but they haven't been sent. <laughs> I can make jokes too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, the first scripture I want to read, first of all, is in Luke chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 41. Luke chapter 2, verse 41. 41. It's talking about Jesus and his parents. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. So they were gone a day's journey, so it took them a day to go back. That's two days they didn't know where he was. <clears throat> Verse 46, Now it was so that after three days, the third day, they, fa they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. He was listening to the teachers, the scribes and the lawyers. He was listening to them, and he was asking questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. For three days we've been looking for you, didn't know where you were. Couldn't have, you know, you wake up one day and one of your kids not around, in three days he's gone, you're going to be more than a little excited. More than a little, and I'm pretty sure they were more than a little excited about that, where he was and what was going on. I, and I don't even have any idea that she was very quiet when she was talking to him. I mean, this is the Blessed Mother, but I think the Blessed Mother might have been a little stressed <laughs> because her boy had been missing for three days and she finally found him. And I think she talked with him more than in just a normal tone of voice. Why have you done this to us? We sought you anxiously. And he said to them, well, why is it that you sought me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? Here's what I want to say to you about that. No question that Jesus was the called of God. That's not an issue. He was called, he had been called in the Old Testament, this one who came as the Son of Man, the Son of God coming into this earth as the Son of Man, Oh, in the Old Testament, it calls him many things. He's the deliverer. And then what we read in, in the book of, of uh, Matthew, in his birth, he's called Emmanuel. 
God with us. Right? His name means salvation and deliverance. He's called something. Not, not called to go somewhere, but called to be. So he's called, there's no question. And here's what I want to say to you. We are each called sons. Now, go to Matthew chapter, chapter uh, 3. And we're going to read concerning this called person. This person who is called deliverance. This person who is called God with us. This one who is called salvation. That's, he's called to be that. Not just to do that, but he is that. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, he's at the river Jordan. John the Baptist is baptizing people and Jesus goes to him to be baptized. And in verse 16 says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. When he was twelve, he was called, but he was neither equipped, qualified, or sent. He, he, he stayed because, and he said to them, don't you know this? I have to be about my father's business. And you know what I think? I think, this is just what I think. I think that if they had not said anything, if they had just turned around, my, Joseph and Mary just turned around and went back, he'd have stayed there. And because of what was in him, he, he might very well have tried to do some and be some of the things before the time. But God had a, had a, a, a protection for him. He w the protection was Mary and Joseph. They kept him from stepping into an arena that he was neither equipped, qualified, or sent into. Just a thought. Just a thought. Now, here we read about him being equipped. And there's two aspects to this equipping. He was baptized in water and baptized in the spirit. That's one aspect of the equipping. The other is his identification. The father identified him. <clears throat> and here's the thing, and this is for us individually, corporately, but it's also for you to know to be able to help somebody else along the way. When you know these things yourself and are walking in these things, then when God sends somebody across your path that uh, is the called and are tr like Jesus at 12, perhaps trying to get into that situation before they're equipped, qualified, or sent, you can help them. See, God's not interested in slowing you down. He's interested in protecting you. He's interested in protecting, I'm going to use a word, He's interested in protecting the investment that He has in you. He doesn't want you to destroy. You can, yeah, thank you. <laughs> he, he does not want what he's put in you. Because God's invested something in you. An investment means he put something into you. When you invest in something, you put money into a thing. You invest it. You put something into it. God has put something into you. He's put his life, his love, his faith, his purpose in you. He's invested in you. All of these things. And the only way he's going to get the return is for you to be able to 
not only know who he, Jesus knew that he was called, but he hadn't been equipped or qualified. So he was baptized in the in water. He's baptized in the spirit, and Father spoke from heaven. So he was equipped. You have to not only know your call, but you have to be equipped to be set into the situation that God has for you. And so we read now in chapter 4, uh, just start at verse 1. This is immediately after what happened in chapter 3. Then, it means after what had happened in chapter 3, then Jesus was led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God didn't lead him into the wilderness for testing in, cha in Luke chapter 2. The Spirit of God led him after he was not only called, but he was qualified. Or he was equipped, I'm sorry. After he, he was called, he was equipped. And he led him into the wilderness to be qualified. You know, the U.S. Army does the same thing. Now, we don't have a, uh, an army where, with the draft anymore. But they used to. And it, you know what they did? They took those soldiers and they equipped them. They gave them equipment. They gave them clothing. And they gave them equipment. They, did you know in the military, they give a guy a rifle who's never been to the firing range. He's equipped, but he never been to the firing range. He hadn't been qualified with it yet, but he got this rifle. And there's a lot of Christians that like that got this stuff, but they don't let God qualify them. The U.S. Army is smarter than a lot of the church <laughs> because the U.S. Army will e equip you, but they will qualify you before they will send you into a situation where you use those things. So he, he, let's read it. Jesus was led, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days, now it tells you what the purpose of, in verse 1, it tells you why he went there. To the tempting, the testing, was to uh, prove or qualify what, who he was and how he was, could operate. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days, afterward he was hungry. I want to talk to you a minute about those 40 days. You say, well, it doesn't say nothing about it. Well, that's right. But you just got through listening to a guy that told you it's not wrong to use your intelligence. Think about it. <clears throat> What, <clears throat> excuse me, what was the, uh, was, was, was he fasting just so he could get skinny? Or was he fasting to be able to draw near to God? I believe he was fasting to draw near to God. Uh, you say, well, do you have to fast to draw near to God? No. Not necessarily so. However, um, you have to uh, deal with the flesh. And what he was doing was bringing the flesh under. And he was on purpose drawing near to God in this time. He was putting the realm of the spirit first. And I believe by doing, in doing that, then Father said some things to him. Now I know, according from what I've read, not only in the scripture... But what, what I know about history, Jesus quoted the Old Testament multiple times. That's the only Bible they had was the Old Testament. He quoted from nearly every book in the Old Testament, but particularly Deuteronomy. He learned those. That just didn't just happen. He didn't just, you know, get, get all those scriptures May have, God could have given him that in that fasting, could have downloaded all of that. But I think, and this is just what I think, if you don't like it, it's okay. But I think 
he'd memorized, learned those scriptures, and the Holy Spirit that he had been equipped with brought to his understanding those scriptures and illuminated those scriptures to him in ways that he'd never seen it before. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to lead you into all truth. And Jesus said, thy word is truth. So the Holy Spirit leads us, guides us into the truth of God's word. And it's the truth of God's word is actually more than what you read on the ink on the paper. There's more in that than you can read just reading it. I promise you. There's understanding and insight that God will give you by His Spirit as you read the Word. And so those 40 days of fasting was a further illumination of the equipping that He had been given. He was, in one sense, equipped in the schools that He went to as a boy. Israelite boys, Jewish boys, went to the schools in the synagogue and they learned, they learned uh, the scriptures. It's a shame they didn't send the girls too, but they didn't. Say, I'm not a chauvinist, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so after the 40 days he was hungry and the tempter came to him and said, If you are... See, I always ask that a question, questioning what God has said or done. That's what he did with Adam, with Eve. Did God really say? That's what he asked Eve. Did God really say you're going to die if you eat that? If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Jesus said, well, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He knew that scripture, but he was doing that scripture. He was living by what God had said. He was living by what God had said. At that moment, he was living on. He did not need to turn that, those stones. He was hungry, but he did not... Hey, being hungry and having a need aren't necessarily so not the same thing. You, need, you may need to think on that a little bit. But being hungry, he didn't need, he wasn't going to die if he didn't eat, didn't turn those stones into bread. He wasn't going to die if he didn't have bread to eat at that moment. It wasn't a need. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He, he was living, gaining strength from the, <clears throat> the word that was illuminated to his understanding. And God wants me and he wants you to know that you gain strength from the word that God illuminates to your understanding. We are to live by that. We live by the word that is proceeding. Not just, <clears throat> not just the word that has proceeded, but the word that is proceeding. What is God saying today? That's what we live by, the word that is proceeding. Yes, the word that has proceeded from God is valuable. I need that. <clears throat> but I also need to learn to listen to, <clears throat> to listen for what he's saying today. I have to learn how to do that. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So he was living by that. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you, and in your hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he said, It's written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He was responding to what God's Word said not what the enemy said. 
He was living by what God said, not what the enemy said. And the next thing is, he didn't have to prove to himself some way or prove to someone else in some way that what God says is true. When I come to the place where I understand and believe fully in my own heart that God's word works, I don't have to prove to somebody that it works just because they don't believe. There's proof enough in how we live. I said there's proof enough in how we live, not what we do to prove something. The proof is in the pudding. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. I'm eating God's word. I'm living by it. And they, people can see that. You're eating the word of God. You're living by it. Man doesn't live by, you see, it, this applies to you and me as well. We live by the Word of God. We eat that. Our strength comes from the Word that comes from the mouth of God. We live by that, and that demonstrates who our God is. It demonstrates our confidence and our trust in Him. And you don't have to prove God. If he, and He said you shall not, you say, well, He said He will not tempt the Lord. I don't have to test God. I don't have to test Him. It's, it's proved out in every step of the way in our lives when we live it. You, you I have to decide to believe what God's Word says and live by that. And we can. We're enabled. We're called to do that. We're equipped to do that. Then in verse 8 it says again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him away with you Satan it's written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. <clears throat> the same you that's spoken of in chapter 4 verse 7 and the you that is spoken of in verse 10 is you. It's not just the devil. Yeah, the devil's going to fall down and worship God. But you shall worship the Lord. That's who he's talking to. The letter, the word of God wasn't written to the devil. It's written to you and to me. Amen. And so... Uh, you shall worship. And he knew that. It was written to him as well. He lived by that. He worshiped God. And his worship, let me tell you what his worship was. His obedience to that word. Your, your first place of worship is your obedience to the word of God. And so he wasn't going to obey the word of the enemy. Because he knew that his worship belonged to God and he served God alone. He wasn't, listen, if he'd, have, if he'd have done what the enemy said, he'd have not only been worshiping, but he'd become putting place, put himself in the place of serving. Because worship, the thing that follows worship is service. So, <laughs> let your worship be your obedience first. It's not the songs you sing. Or how high you can jump or shout, how loud you can shout. It's your obedience to God. And he obeyed God in the, in the fullest. And because he, had, he knew he was called, he had the equipment, and he came through the qualif qualifying experience, then um, he was sent. <clears throat> you say, well, wait a minute. He, he'd already come into the earth. He did. But he, did, he was not sent till he went through those first three steps. 
He was not sent to do what, what he had called, was called to do. Verse 17 say, in that same fourth chapter says, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He, that is the, the verse that tells us he was sent because he was doing with the calling and the equipping and the qualifying he, the, he was sent finally <clears throat> I'll just give you a personal thing I, I knew the Lord from the time I was a, a little boy God was very real to me even as a child I found out when I was about 16 that I, God was moving me in a direction uh, that I've been living out for the last 50 years. I didn't get equipped till I was about 29 years old where I was baptized in the Spirit. But there were a lot of years. With Jesus, it wasn't the same. He spent 40 days uh, in the qualifying. But uh, the, I, I was called and equipped. But I spent a number of years. And you say, well, what's the difference? The difference is this, I think. Jesus did not come into this earth with a sin nature. You and I did. So the qualifying takes a while. And I've told you, and I'm going to tell you again, God's not in a hurry. <clears throat> My wife sitting over there will tell you that several different times I got in a hurry and wanted to get out because I, I got this calling and I got this equipment, I got this anointing. <clears throat> but I wasn't qualified. And when he, God did release us and send us, I, don't, I, I kind of believe I wasn't fully qualified. <laughs> kind of wasn't. <laughs> God in his mercy uh, takes care of us in the midst of the messes that we make. And so the calling, the equipping, the qualifying, if you're still walking through the qualifying uh, process, don't worry about it. God's at work. He's teaching you how to be and do what he's called you to do. Don't get in a hurry because God's not. He told me one day, he said, there's no need for you to be in a hurry. What I'm doing in your life's going to take the rest of your life. I, I ne I'm not ever going to wake up one day and say, oh, I thank God he's through with all of that. Now I can just go be and do whatever it is. You know, I got this anointing bump running down in my arms and I can just do all kinds of stuff. No, I'm, I'm still in the qualifying process. Been sent, but I'm still learning and growing. <laughs> and that's true of all of us. But I wanted to give you these four words so you can see how God works. So you don't get in a hurry. Now, if God gives you something, says something, and says go do something, and you know God said that, then go do it. You say, well, I can't. No, I know you can't. Not without Him. Not without putting to work what he's already given you. It's not just going to happen. You have to be and do. Don't forget who you are, who you be. He made you who you are. He made you who you be so you can do what he's sent you to do. But there's always the qualifying. Jesus was qualified in the wilderness and then he was sent and he began to preach the kingdom of God is at hand and then you read through and you follow what he did. He was operating in the calling. He was using the equipment. He, he had been qualified to do what he did and as he did that, it was proof of the pudding that he was sent. 
Praise the Lord. Four words. Write them down and get them in your heart. Called, equipped, qualified, and sent. It's important that we know those and recognize this is how God works in our lives. Praise God. All right.